After over a year of making videos on Borderlands, I've come to a conclusion. I hate playing Borderlands. So what if I could play Borderlands without actually playing the game? So I wrote a script to beat the game for me. Uh, kinda. Can a bot beat Borderlands? I don't see why not. Bots beat other games all the time. But as far as I know, no one's ever made one to beat Borderlands. So I decided to take it upon myself to make the first bot to ever beat the game. And by bot, I mean an auto hotkey script, which could be considered a bot depending on who you ask. The point is, I want to be able to press a single button on my keyboard, walk away from my computer, and come back to the game being completed. Also, a bunch of people told me that trying this was stupid and a waste of time, which is kind of my brand. So, uh, yeah. Meet Buttsmoke11, named after the famous Borderlands speedrunner, Deceptix. There are some obvious problems with the script beating Borderlands. First off, the enemies don't move in set patterns. Hell, they don't even spawn the same way every time. So how do you tell a script where to shoot and for how long? That's the neat thing. You don't. Just use Gage with an infinity. Gage's bullets ricochet so you don't need to know where the enemies are. Also, Death Trap will attack them on his own. So all I have to do is make sure I give the script enough time to ensure everything dies. A much bigger problem is that there are a lot of areas where a mission requires you to pick up an item that'll drop in a random location. Considering the fact that a script is just a predetermined set of inputs, the only way to ensure that it picks up the item is for it to walk over every possible location in the area while spamming E. And for an area like the dust, that could be a bit of an issue. Now you might be thinking, why not just use an object detection software to recognize different perspectives of the item that dropped, walk over to it, and pick it up? Because, uh, I, I don't know how to do that. That's a bridge I'll cross when I get there. Now this is gonna be a UVHM geared run, which means I'll be starting at the max level with all the items I'll need. Starting from level 1 would be nearly impossible due to the complete randomness of the items that drop and the existence of ammo. Because this is UVHM, I skipped the entire Knuckle Dragger encounter, but there's a glitch I want Buttsmoke to do, so the first thing he'll do is turn around... and die. Don't worry, this is completely intentional. Dying here teleports you all the way back to the beginning of the area. Which is good, because I need to make it to a fast travel station, and this one doesn't have any enemies in the way. All I have to do is walk through this doorway. Okay, that was a bit to the left. Okay, now too far to the right. And left again. Okay, and made it through the door. Let me just run that again. And it's too far to the left. So... This is a problem. Basically, Buntsmoke is a fucking idiot. Even though AutoHockey is putting these inputs in the exact same way every time down to the millisecond, something in the game is causing variation. This is called desync. Something in the game is changing my inputs ever so slightly, and the further I go into a level, the more noticeable the differences become. So something like crossing a large bridge would be fine, but walking through doorways... absolutely impossible. If I can find a nice corner to get stuck in, it should guarantee that I start in the same position every time. Yeah, that still didn't work. So for every area, even if the script were perfect, there would only be a small chance that it's successful. And if I tried to do every area in a row, the odds of success become low enough that you could round it down to zero. Well, I guess while it's technically possible, it is just not feasible for a script to beat Borderlands. I'll need to do some coding. Keegan, I'm trying to write a script to beat Borderlands, but every time I run it, I end up in a different spot. I don't know if it's caused by variations in starting position or the way I'm looking or just random RNG effects desyncing my movement, but is there any- Oh, okay, that was fast. What is this? It's a uh, Python automated bot that um, horses you get all that? Uh, yes. You got any questions? No, not, uh, I, I, I think I got it. With Keegan's new image recognition thing that works almost most of the time, the mission was back on. Even though the new bot increases the chances of success from nearly impossible to kind of doable, it's still only kind of doable. Sections like the dust are still gonna be nearly impossible. 
So instead of beating the entire game from start to finish, I'm going to be making a boosted character, giving it gear, and just try to beat the final mission. It's not as impressive as what I wanted to do, but it's still never been done. If it's not too rough, I'll try to do the whole game. There are four areas to get through. Sanctuary, the Iridium Blight, Hero's Pass, and the Vault. The only thing I have to do is talk to Claptrap and make it to the fast travel station. The main problem with Sanctuary is the people. It is completely RNG based where they'll spawn, how many there'll be, and how likely they are to get in my fucking way, you fat bastard, move! Assuming the Sanctuary citizens don't get in the fucking way, but Smoke looks at this picture, looks at this pillar, looks at this pillar, looks at this flat rock thing, looks at these boxes, looks at this trash pile, and looks at this trash pile. Easy. Except, not at all. It can go wrong at pretty much every single possible spot because of the random citizens, but there aren't very many places to get stuck, so it's not that bad. Also, it's the first area, so if Butt Smoke's gonna mess up anywhere, I'd want it to be here. Scripting Sanctuary took like three hours. Alright, we're jumping ahead to the end. The vault is the second smallest area, so I decided to do that next. Remember when I brought up desync before? Yeah, that happens a lot here. Why? Earthquakes. I have no idea why, but the earthquakes happen at different times every time you go through here, and they completely change where butt smoke ends up. I'm not 100% sure that it's actually the earthquakes causing it, but I'm gonna pretend I know it for sure so I sound smart. It's the earthquakes. Normally this wouldn't be a problem because of the image recognition thing, but everything here is just dark gray rocks. I don't want to be a rock racist, but they all look the same to me. And since the lava is moving, no two screenshots will look the same, which will confuse butt smoke, because he's an idiot. Alright, well, I guess I'll just have to script this section without the screenshots and hope for the best. Luckily, I didn't have to run too far before finding the light at the end of the tunnel. Literally, that big-ass neon sign at the end of the tunnel is perfect for a screenshot. Okay, it sees the sign most of the time. After that, it's just a long, narrow hallway. Remember when I said doorways are absolutely impossible? Well, hallways are just doorways with extra steps. Normally, I would just try to hug the wall and slide along it into the next room, but there are so many jagged surfaces that I can't take two steps without getting noticed by Step Bro. It looks fucked, but Bud Smoke just walks left and right until he's in the elevator. If it works, it works. Oh, yeah, and he hits the button every time. Somehow, that was the easy part. Fun fact! Once you hit this button, you automatically hit the fast travel station at the bottom of the elevator, so I get to skip some walking and reset my position. Nice. Butt Smoke looks at this sign, then walks into the arena, and good god, this part is hell. Look at all these cliffs, ledges, and sources of depression. Look at this. I'm gonna tell you exactly what inputs the script does to adjust for all the possibilities. It runs forward, jumps six times, walks to the right, runs forward and jumps nine more times, walks to the left and jumps. Thank god there's a cutscene here, because 90% of the time the script is still putting in inputs while the cutscene is going. If it weren't for the cutscene, half the time he'd be fighting Jack and the other half of the time he would just be in the lava. Alright, it's boss fight time. Butt Smoke shoots, summons Death Trap, throws grenades, and waits. Jesus Christ, Jack is bitch made. The bot almost always kills him. Okay, here's the problem with the warrior. After the Jack fight, I have no idea where I am. How do you want to fight when you don't even know where you are and you might be stuck in a bunch of wet lava? You don't. So the bot leaves the game and comes back. After that, I recycled the code from the Jack fight, but this time walked backwards to a spot where nothing hits you, shot a rock for like 10 minutes, and boom, that's a dead warrior. Alright, now the easy part is out of the way. Yes, the final boss is the easy part. Well, time to be a rock racist again. There's no good place to take a screenshot. And it's such a far walk from the spawn to Claptrap that it's practically impossible that Butt Smoke will make it without the desync running him face first into a wall. Oh, also King Mong. If Big Monkey happens, I just have to reset. Even if Monkey doesn't happen, getting through this roadblock is damn near impossible. So I had to do something ill-advised that I actively tried to avoid. I put this brain-dead robot child behind the wheel of a car. This is gonna be rough. Actually, driving is more consistent than walking most of the time. I don't know how, but I, I guess I'm happy about it. 
So now I just shoot and spin in a circle to blow up the car so it's not in my way, send down Death Trap to deal with the racks that I aggro by trying to blow up the car, walk through the thing, look at Claptrap, and I'm good to go. Alright, big ass door. All I need to do is look at the ground, shoot, and spin in a circle. Nice. This is the part I've been the most worried about. There's a reason I saved Heroes Pass for last. It is... big. Alright, so the bot has to walk over here, look at this pillar, walk over to these enemies, hope to god none of them have a rocket launcher, walk over here, fight some more enemies, walk over here, fight some more enemies, show this rock who's boss, look at this crate, follow Brick, die intentionally, let Brick do the fighting, join Brick in the fighting, follow Brick, die intentionally, let Brick do the fighting, join Brick in the fighting, pray, walk through this door, pray more, Die intentionally, grenade jump, I didn't teach him how to do that, he just started doing it. Walk over to this door and hope for the best. Fuck. Okay, so there's no chance that I make it through here without dying. Remember that glitch I said I was gonna do at the start of the video? I think it's time to add that in. It's called the buck up glitch. I won't explain exactly how it works right now, but just know it makes my shield instantly refill whenever I take damage. If you want to know how it works, I put a link to an explanation in the description. Okay, now that I'm kind of immortal, Heroes Pass is kind of doable. That took... well over 20 hours. Alright, fuck it, time for the final run, I guess. The, oh god. I ran over my headphone cord with my chair, and it ripped my head off. I wasn't supposed to be here yet. Don't hit me, please. Oh, you fucked me. I... It doesn't have an infinite timer, Baki. It, it will run out of time. Oh. And it ran out of time. This this breaks the streak. I was right. Oh no. Oh god! That's god. an E-Tech slag launcher, isn't it? This is more the kind of jack fight I'm accustomed to. Him getting absolutely shit on for no reason. Hey, Jolts is here. Jolts, you're here for potentially the run. I mean, the warrior's dead, but it ain't over. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. The run isn't over when the warrior dies. But Smoke has to pick up the vault key to trigger the final cutscene. This part is hell. Okay. I have high hopes. Rack, you stay away. It's rack okay, the racks away. only aggro if you shoot them here. Oh, okay. That's true. Backing up. Okay. He's just getting ready, he's getting ready. Alright, let's see if up. he finds- He's lining it up. Take off the gun. Using math. Does he find the first one? He found the first one. Jump didn't get eaten, that's good. Get yourself step road. alright. How does it find the second one? Oh, it found the second one! Oh, oh man. Oh man. This is gonna be fantastic if it works. Now take a little slide to the I'm right. I'm stressed out. I'm does honestly, it find the third one? Stressed too. Oh, he's stressed. 
How many are there, Mink? Four. That was the third one. So the only thing... Damn, really 360 them? The only thing that can <laughs> fuck it up at this point is the RNG of the loot drops. Oh my god, you're right. I didn't even think about that stuff. Always gets caught. Oh no, if you just press E and pick up a gun? No, that's oh, fine. No. no, that's fine. Oh. It, it's if uh, the gun is too close or if there's a health vial and it gets in the way of the next screenshot. But he's gonna turn around and we'll find out. Also, a rack might get aggroed by me shooting Jack. That's fine. It looks like we're we're chilling. Bing Jimmy. Oh, it's true. If Jack falls in the no key. Rack. Oh yeah, if Jack falls in the key, we're fucked. Oh man. Right, no, no, we're good, we're good. Oh man. This is literally like the most stressed I've been all week. Oh my god! He did I, my, it! My, my, oh my god, it's done! He did it! Holy it's fucking done. shit. And just like that, but smoke fucking did it. After over 100 hours of scripting, 54 attempts over the course of a 9 hour stream. I am finally done. I'd submit it to speedrun.com, but they won't let me add it as a category. I'm calling bullshit on that. I'm the world record holder for geared boosted bot percent. Fuck you. Shoutouts of the patron variety. The largest of thanks to Chody, also known as the man with a plan. Every plan he's ever made has succeeded. He's never made a plan, but hey, zero for zero is like a lot, maybe? Extra special thanks to Shedder Dude, who became a magician's assistant to find out the trick behind sawing people in half. Uh, turns out there's no trick. Now his body is held together by glue. US Navy Squid, who is the greatest salesman to ever live. He could sell ice to a polar bear, which he did right before getting mauled. Special thanks to Tarkus Lives, who used to sing with the voice of an angel, until Flig Mode, who can start fires with his mind, and a lighter. A lighter does most of the work. The infamous Potato, who's so smart his massive brain barely fits in his head. It's a severe medical condition, please help. Dwarvo, who has often wondered why. Why, dear God, why? Oh, please no, for the love of God, why? Hmm. McBaconator, whose emotional fortitude is so strong he almost never cries. Almost. Toy Story 3 hits different. And Abaddon, whose favorite color is red because it reminds him of the blood of his enemies. And Sunsets, 